Okay, here we go. We're in unit two. Uh, so this is unit two, lesson one. So the first question is notice and wonder. Transformed rectangles. They asked you, what do you notice? What do you wonder? So I'm just gonna write notice over here and wonder. So we'll do notice wonder notice wonder one more time notice wonder okay so this very first image I notice uh, it's called figure A Do I notice? I notice it's a. What shape is that? It's a rectangle. I notice uh, P, Q, R, and S. I also notice it's the only one that is blue. Um, what do I wonder about this? Uh, Hmm. I would say, why is it the only one without these apostrophes? So why is it the only one without the apostrophes or prime labels? Okay, let's move on to B. What do I notice here? Um, I notice uh, prime labels. I notice uh, initially that it looks like there's a line of reflection. This looks like a reflection of A. What do I wonder? Um, let's see. I wonder how we could prove. Sorry, I'm filming. What is that? Mail. Mail for me? Yeah. Okay. I'm not it is. Oh, okay. Just junk mail. Thanks. So I wonder how we can prove a reflection. Okay, number C. Uh, I notice the primes again. So P prime, R prime, Q prime, and S S prime. Um, it doesn't look like they follow the same order though. Like we won't, we go from P and Q being across from one another to P and Q being like diagonal relationships. So I noticed that the order switched. My first thought is Is there even a way? To take A to C? I don't think there is, but I'm, I'm wondering if there is even a way to take A to C. Okay. Um, in this one, I noticed the primes. I also noticed that R and S are both across from each other compared to A. I noticed Q and P are both across from each other. So it seems like it might be, I'm thinking it's a, uh, 
a combo rigid transformation. So I'm thinking it's a translation and rotation. Let's see what else. Uh, same deal. Can we prove with patty paper? That's what I'm wondering. Anyway, um, there's each of the four. So you have to come up with some noticings and wonderings. And then in this section, I also want you, like during class, not only write these down, um, but also that way, once it's time to share in groups, you can share these um, with, your, with your home groups. So awesome job. Okay, uh, 1.2, if we know this, then we know that. So triangle A, B, C, triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle D, E, F. Okay. What you'll notice is that statements one and two essentially say the same thing. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Second one, triangle ABC is also congruent to triangle DEF. So this, I just wanna show you, is a um, very good example of um, the symbols that you can use You'll notice this symbol appears. That's your symbol for congruency. So that's the symbol for congruency. I like to refer it as an equal sign on steroids. <laughs> it implies a little bit more than just equal. Uh, congruency means that um, sides and angles, I should say corresponding sides, and corresponding angles, so corresponding sides and corresponding angles have the same lengths and the same measures. So sides have lengths, angles have measures. So that's what congruence means. We're gonna learn more about that. But um, anyway, ABC is congruent to DEF. The other thing I want you to write down in your book is that order matters in a congruence statement. What's a congruence statement? One or two. So order matters in a congruence statement. That means if you say A, B, C is congruent to this triangle, you have to Make sure the order is correct. So A to B is the same as D to E. So A, B, C is congruent to D, E, F. Okay, so the first question asks you to find a sequence of rigid motions that takes this one to this one. So one to two. Okay, you can do that. So we have to talk about the sequence of rigid motions. So there are definitely a couple. My tip is to use patty paper. So let's do that. Let's trace ABC. A, B, C.
see, we got A, B, C. What if we did B to E? Rotate till C gets to F. And then reflect over E, F. That would work. So there's a couple of ways you could do this. First one, you could do a translation. Point B to E. Translation plus rotation. Center E, direction clockwise, so center E, we're going clockwise, and rather than specifying an angle, I'm just going to say until C aligns with F. So translation B to E. Rotate until C aligns with F. And then the last one is a reflection. Over line EF. So you just need to reflect over EF, and then you'd be there. There you go. Okay, so that's the first one you could have done. The second one, pretty simple. What if we just had like this line of reflection right here, right down the middle? Couldn't you then just reflect over that line and then it would be there? So you could also just describe reflection over a vertical line between or at the vertical line Passing through the midpoint of B and E. Passing through the midpoint of B, E. Okay. Uh, what is the image of B, C after your transformation? So say we went like that to that that so BC the image there is B and C the image is EF remember we go from a pre image pre image is first we go from a pre-image to an image. So the first one is called a pre-image. The second one is the image. The copy is the image. Okay, so BC. You got ABC. Here's BC. You can already tell it's going to be EF. But uh, if you reflected it over, you'll see with the patty paper. Okay. Explain how you know BC is congruent to EF. Well, you're going to know a few different ways. I want to get the definition of congruence ready for you. So one figure is called congruent to another figure if there is a sequence 
of translations, rotations, and reflections that takes the first figure onto the second. So if you can show and prove that there is a sequence of translations, rotations, and reflections, it takes B, C to E, F, um, then you know that they are congruent. So B, C is congruent to E, F because there was a series of rigid transformations taking triangle A, B, C to triangle D, E, F. There was a series a, of rigid transformations taking triangle ABC to DEF and BC and EF are corresponding parts. That's what I'd say. Okay. So justify angle, the uh, angle ABC, so angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF. So in congruence, remember, if you can prove a series of rigid transformations from a pre-image to an image, then you know that the corresponding parts are congruent. So you would just simply say angle ABC, this one that I'm going to color in right here, is congruent to angle DEF, this one right here, DEF, because Same answer. There was a series of rigid transformations taking triangle ABC to triangle DEF and thus corresponding parts are also congruent. There you go. There's the answer for 1.2. If we know this, then we know that. Okay, tough problem move on to making quadrilaterals so they say draw a triangle okay they don't say which one so I'm just gonna draw three points doesn't really matter where they are yeah there's my triangle cool find the midpoint of the longest side of your triangle. Well, I know it's either this or this. I think it's this one. Let's just double check. It's a little over two inches, a little under two inches. So this, we call this A, B, C. Longest side, this is the longest side. Find the midpoint of the longest side. How do you find the midpoint? Well, you could just measure it and take half of it. It 
So it's about two plus one and a little bit of a hash mark. So the midpoint's gonna be one and about halfway. So here's your midpoint, okay? Rotate it 180 degrees using the midpoint as the center, okay? Okay, so we know if we're doing 180 degrees, AB is gonna be taken over here somewhere. So it's gonna form a straight line. So AB, okay, AB should be right here. Okay, so we're gonna have AB and then C right here. C prime. This one's going to be end up being A prime, and this one will be B prime. So let's run that again. So A, B, C. If you took the perfect midpoint, get 180 degree rotation. Um, they're going to line up so that uh, A prime is now B, B prime is now A. C prime over here. Label the corresponding parts uh, parts and mark what must be congruent. So because we did a rotation, which is a rigid transformation, you know that a, B, C is congruent to A prime, B prime, C prime. So we know that this segment, since it's shared, is going to be congruent. A prime to C prime is going to be like A to C. So let's do one hash mark. And then B, C. is going to be congruent to B prime, C prime. Now, angle A, if we rotated it, here's angle A. Watch this. Bring angle A in. That one's gonna be over here. So what we're gonna do is say one hash mark here one hash mark here. Now here's angle B. So we rotate that 180 degrees. That's going to be over here. So we're going to have one, two. Goes over here. One, two. And then last but not least, let's use three marks for angle C. We got A, B, C, we rotated it 180 degrees, and so now it's over here. So one, two, three, one, two, three, 
That's how you properly label. Now make a conjecture and justify it. What type of quadrilateral have you formed? So we've got one plus two, one plus two. So that means this whole angle is the same as this whole angle. And you got that angle being the same as that. So you have two pairs of opposite angles being the same. You've also got same side length, same side length, same side length, same side length. So you have two pairs of corresponding sides, but they are different. These two are a different length than these two. So it's not, they're not four of the same. It's two pairs of two. So this one I'm gonna say is a parallelogram. Now, what is the definition of that quadrilateral type? Quadrilateral in which pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So pairs of opposite sides parallel now C is going to be for a little bit later of a date, but why must the quadrilateral you have, you have fit the definition? Well, because CD and C prime, B prime are parallel and B prime are in AC and A prime, C prime are also parallel. Okay, that was it, 1.3, uh, making quadrilaterals. So um, the key word is corresponding. So in your lesson one summary, you need to um, define corresponding. So if a part of the image matches up with a part of the original figure, we call them corresponding parts. Could be an angle, a point, or a side. If two figures are not congruent, then, then there is not a rigid transformation that takes one to the other. If two figures are congruent, then there is a rigid transformation that takes one figure onto the other. The same rigid transformation can also be applied to individual parts of the figure, such as segments and angles, because rigid transformations move every point on the plane. Therefore, corresponding parts of two congruent figures are congruent to each other. This is the big lesson learned today. Corresponding parts of two congruent figures are congruent to each other. 
So that was your lesson one summary. I'm gonna go over uh, one other thing, which is the cool down, which you would have turned in today. So the cool down, making an angle bisector. So what they're saying is triangle A prime, B prime, C prime is a reflection. So yeah, A prime, B, B prime, C prime is a reflection of triangle A, B, C across line B, C. Here's B, C. Okay, so it's a reflection, right? Which means that it's a rigid transformation. So then, um, if it's a rigid transformation, then that means that the two triangles are congruent. That also means that um, corresponding parts are congruent. So you have to prove that ray BC, this one in red, is the angle bisector of angle A, B, A prime. So let's look at what the definition of an angle bisector is. An angle bisector is a line through the vertex of an angle that divides it into two equal angles. So it's this line, this dashed line, through the vertex of an angle that divides it into two, one and two, equal angles. Okay? So, is BC a line? Yes. Does it go through the vertex of an angle? Yes. Does it divide it into two equal angles? That's what we have to prove. So we know it's a line, goes through the vertex. Does it divide it into two equal angles? So we have to show that this angle is congruent to this angle. So to prove this, We need to also prove that the measure of angle A, B, C equals the measure of angle A prime, B prime, C prime. How are we gonna do that? Patty paper. So, let's do it. I'll just do right here. A. B. C. So you got A, B, C. They gave us that triangle A prime, B prime, C prime was a reflection of A, B, C across B, C. So because they gave us that, I'm showing it to you with the patty paper, but you will know that this angle when reflected across BC 
becomes that angle. So therefore, we have just proven that this angle and this angle are the same. So is BC a line that goes through the vertex of the angle and divides it into two equal angles? Yes, it is. Now, why does measure A, B, C, this angle? Why does it equal A prime, B prime, C prime? Because in rigid transformations, corresponding parts are congruent. So there you go. There's your cool down. And uh, hope that helped.